Hello and welcome to the short board on Parsha's Noach Shishi. In this week's Parsha, we're going to discuss uh, why it was that Canaan, the son of Ham, was cursed rather than Ham himself. And as we discuss Mida Keneged Mida for bad, we'll also have a discussion of Mida Keneged Mida for good. So Shishi starts in Perak Tes, Pasuk Ches tells a story about after the flood Noah went out and he uh, planted a vineyard and a miracle happened and overnight uh, it grew the grapes and he made wine and he got drunk and he revealed himself in his tent. Next it discusses that Ham came in and he saw his father's nakedness and what did he do? He went back out and he got his brothers Shem and Yafes, and he told them what happened. But when they came in, Yafes and Shem came in. So Shem and Yafes, they put their uh, blankets on their shoulders, and they walked in backwards so they wouldn't see the nakedness, and they covered the father's nakedness, and they went out. So as I indicated, as a result, when uh, Noah realized what happened, so he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. But if Ham was the one who came in, why is it that Canaan was the one who was cursed? So I'd like to share a few answers. Um, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, says that because Ham had already been blessed, as it says, Vayivarach el him es noach ve'es banav, so someone who's blessed cannot be cursed. Just like the other side, we see that someone who's cursed cannot be blessed. That's why the servant of Avram, Eliezer, was not able to marry into the family. Um, and so, since the curse would not be chal, would not apply to Ham, so he passed on to the next generation, to his son, uh, Canaan, and cursed him. And since Canaan was, according to some of the Bahar, then a curse for him would be like cursing all the sons of, of, uh, of Ham. And this is, the curse is Mida connected Mida, because when Ham saw the shame of his father, you know, it's something embarrassing that his son saw it. Therefore, by becoming a servant and being a servant is something that's embarrassing, it's shameful, you don't get respect. So that was the Midah Keneged Mida to pass on the shame uh, to the Doros. Also, uh, some say that Canaan uh, actually was the one who saw Noah in this situation, drunk and naked, and he told his father and that caused his father to sin, and therefore it made sense that Canaan himself was punished. And another reason is that Hashem actually, as it were, had wanted to have four sons for Noah, and as a result, uh, one for each of the uh, Dalad Ruchos, for the four directions of the world, and Ham was jealous and wanted to uh, not have to split more of the world, and keep his one-third share, so therefore he said that he was Messares, he castrated Noah, and for that, um, his son, Canaan, uh, was, was castrated, I'm sorry, was, uh, was cursed, um, and it's being evident, and therefore it ended, uh, in effect, uh, Ham's generations, because he didn't really inherit, because in, what does an Ebed own, an Ebed, whatever an Ebed owns, his master owns. So now if we go to the other side of the course. Um, it says in Rashi, "Be'echu of a yikach shem v'yafes es a simla." In Pasuk Chav Gimel, that shem and yafes took the garment, but it says "va'yikach," and that's a language of singular. It just says "va'yiku," and they took. So it teaches us that that shem, who was mentioned first, was the one who took the real chiz. He was really into doing the mitzvah. He was he wanted he had his reasons. He wanted to do it with alacrity. And from that, he merited to be Zohar to the, the talus of its sitzes. And Yefes, he, married, he buried, merited that his sons would be buried after a war, meaning the war of Gog and Magog. So Rabbi Zalman Suraskim in the Zion Torah says, well, what's the connection of the Kavura, the bury, burial of the sons of Yefes, to the covering of the erva of their father, and the what's the connection of tzitzes, that was given to the B'nai Shem. So he says that by giving a mitzvah of tzitzis, 
that was a guarantee that they would always have the sons of shame, always have uh, clothing to wear, because that's only the time you you machayev with tzitzit. And this was a midah connected midah that he covered his father with clothing, with that simla. So his children always have uh, begadim. And Yefes also is midah connected midah when the machlokas of Gag, the war of uh, Gag and Mago comes. So when they, when the children, when the soldiers are killed, uh, they will be covered, and therefore their erva will also be covered uh, this time with with uh, you know the dirt and the ground. That's also a midah connected midah. And he, Rav Suratskin says, or uh, the Sefer Lekach Tov uh, gives the Musa Haskel that uh, two people do a mitzvah, the same, the same mitzvah, but one does it with enthusiasm, one does it kind of by rote, the reward is so different. So here where we said that shame was the one who did it with enthusiasm to cover his father, so not only did he have the mitzvah of, of Sitzis, but he got it earlier, uh, while he was alive, he got a mitzvah after Matan Torah. His descendants would have this mitzvah of, of tzitzis, and that would be the reward. And meanwhile, for Yefes, his descendants who just you know followed along with shame, so he's while he does get reward, the reward comes much later, only after they're dead, not even alive anymore, and in the future by Machemes Gadol Mavu. So we see the importance of doing a mitzvah wholeheartedly, and that wholeheartedly, and that Hashem will have me to. Negan Mida, and we also have the reason why Canaan was given, as uh, discussed early, the curse, and not and not, not Ham himself directly. So thank you for listening, and have a wonderful week and a wonderful Shabbos.